this is the story, the fantastically true story of Herbert A. Philbrick, who for nine frightening years did lead three lives. Average citizen, high-level member of the Communist Party, and counter-spy for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. For obvious reasons, the names, dates, and places have been changed, but the story is based on fact. In the event of a sudden attack on the United States, certain organizations become the lifeline of our very existence. The communists have every reason to infiltrate such organizations. In a moment, a group of secret communists beam their deadly work toward civil defense. Comrades, will you sit down, please? There's one more matter of business before we adjourn tonight. A courier from party headquarters will be here to address us at 11 o'clock. I'm Comrade Ted. Pay strict attention to what I say. The men of this cell have been assigned to a special project. The women may leave. Security on this project is essential. Until further notice from me, no member of this detail will contact any other comrade outside the detail, officially or unofficially. Until further notice, no member of... You don't like Comrade Ted, do you, Philbrick? You don't like him because he doesn't trust anybody. He doesn't trust anybody, anytime, anywhere, including you. Besides, who can like a guy that runs around in a trench coat, rain or shine? I wonder what my fellow comrades think of him. Comrade Don, other occupation, truck driver. Comrade Jack, other occupation, bank clerk. You can't tell a commie from a non-commie without a microscope, let alone know what they think. Meetings will be in automobiles, never apartments or restaurants. There must be no chance of eavesdropping by human or electronic ears. Comrade Herb, you have a sedan, right? That's right. In your advertising job, you make a lot of calls around town, don't you? Hmm. Good. We'll meet tomorrow in your car. Northeast corner, 4th and Drake, 1 p.m. But I'm due back at the bank at 1. My lunch hour is 12 to 1. I'll switch it somehow. Be careful on your way out, comrades. Comrade Herb, take the back way. Northwest corner of 4th and Drake, 1 p.m. Be on time, Philbrick. Can't be late for your first cell meeting on wheels. A neat commie trick. The comrades arrive one by one so that each can see if the other's being tailed. If there's any doubt, they don't make rendezvous. Comrade Jack and Comrade Don are in the clear this time. Now one block further and we'll see about Comrade Ted. Looks like he's all ready, too. Now Comrade Ted takes over. He'll tell you where to go. You just drive where he tells you, Philbrick. No questions. Questions can only get you into trouble. But why are we going out this way? Why is he taking us out of town? Why these deserted roads? Nobody would pay much attention to four guys in an automobile. Nobody could suspect that a communist cell is holding a meeting. But I guess I was right. Comrade Ted doesn't trust anybody, so he'll play it as safe as he can. Find a quiet place in the country where it's finally safe enough to tell us what this meeting's all about. It's a project of civil defense. It's a party project. Complete and detailed information on America's plans for defense against enemy air attack. Our detail is to collect data on the number and placement of ground observer corps in this city, the location and strength of air defense units, the location of filter centers where intelligence is coordinated, 
The number and location of observation posts manned by volunteer spotters on a 24-hour basis and the position and strength of anti-aircraft gun emplacements, if possible. Is that clear? Any questions? Comrade Ted wouldn't like my question. When you spend your days selling out your country, how do you spend your nights? It can't be sleeping. So each of you will first join a civil defense outfit in your own neighborhood. You shouldn't have any trouble. You're all clean, no arrests, no FBI records. Besides, they're screaming for volunteers. Yeah, a guy was around to see me on Sunday. Told him I'd think it over. Your outfit's particularly good, comrade. Tomorrow, they're going out to hold a demonstration of civilian defense equipment. Be sure you join today. Right. Remember, get details on equipment, manpower, organization. Shouldn't be hard. Wherever you are, just buddy up to the guy in front of you, the guy behind, and the guys on either side. Just shoot the good old American breeze. You'll learn plenty. Be sure to remember what you learn. That covers everything. Drop me off where you pick me up. as you can, get to a phone. You have an important call to make. I'm sorry I won't be able to be at the poker game tonight. Oh, that's too bad. Why not? Well, I forgot. I'm joining my neighborhood civil defense unit. Yeah, I promised a bunch of guys I'd be there. It's, it's my neck if I'm not. Well, all right, if that's the way it is. Yeah, well, I'll be sure and sit in on the game next week. Bye. So long. charged with keeping the home front from going to pieces at the first attack. The party must be plenty sure that I'm a very secret communist to try to get me in here, because civil defense is mighty particular about whom they take. Uh, excuse me, where do I sign up? First table inside, sir. Thank you. I'd like to sign up. How are you doing? Won't you sit down? Nice to have you with us. Uh, name, please. Uh, Herb Philbrick. Occupation? I'm an advertising man, copy and layout. Resident? 3911 Willow. Born in the U.S.? Yes. That's fine. Right hand, please. That's fine. Thank you. Now, if you'll take this to the gentleman at table four. They're security conscious, all right, but anxious to take you if you can convince them that you're a ready, willing, and able volu volunteer. Well, there are a lot of volunteers here tonight, including Special Agent Dressler of the FBI. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Frank Castor is my name. Uh, Herb Philbrick. How do you do, Mr. Philbrick? Won't you sit down? Thank you. Have you ever done any civil defense work before, Mr. Philbrick? No. I see. 
Well, if you go over this little booklet with me, I think I can show you how the organization is set up. We've been working closely with the civil defense people for a long time, Herb. It's a tough outfit for the commies to crack. Security is good, they're thorough, and so are the commies. They keep using people who are tough to trace. Here and there, they get through. All told, we're watching about a half a dozen suspects night and day. Two or three of them happen to be comrades. We want to pick up the right ones as soon as possible. Get all the details you can. Every bit helps. On this page, you'll find the summary of the principal points covered in the book. I hope, however, that you'll read the entire book. Well, by the way, if you can get away from your job late tomorrow afternoon, you might be interested in attending a demonstration of air raid equipment that we're running. After that, we can talk assignment. Mm. Well, it's nice of you to come in, Mr. Philbrick. We appreciate your cooperation. Well, I'm, I'm glad to be of help. Goodbye. Goodbye. into town? Sure. How'd everything go? Fine. They signed me up and expect me at a demonstration tomorrow. That's what I wanted to find out. Drop me a third in Fairmont. Sure. Always glad to give you a lift, comrade, to where you're going. And I have news for you. It isn't very far. The Ambulance Corps. We have 140 pickup trucks in our area. 85 of them are already signed up with us. And that larger truck there, the 4x4, four four, that's part of the fire engine unit. We've signed up over 100 of those. Have 200 to go at least. Now, if you'll step over this way, a few words about the communications setup, which is holding a drill run. Final damage report. Two dead, five hospitalized, Three fires under control. Wrecking car requested to clear two automobiles smashed head on in the middle of the street. Over. Control to RBU Green, Roger. Control out the monitoring. As you can see, this is the heart of the civil defense system communications. Each district is equipped with a two way radio car similar to this. The operators are either hams who do it as a hobby or professional personnel out of the radio and TV shops and so on. In the case of a true attack, it's a good bet that normal communications will be hit hard, both by air raid damage and the work of saboteurs. Therefore, these units will be the backbone of the CD structure. How's it going, Charlie? Any bugs in the new equipment? Smooth as silk. Couldn't do any better on my home set with all the juice in the world. You mean you operate all this just from the battery in your car? Yeah. Actually, it's a special generator, but it ties into the battery system. Like to see it? Yeah, if you've got a minute. Sure. We've got the whole deal built into the trunk. These wires lead to the battery system. This dynamo puts out plenty of power. It's remotely controlled from up front. It's pretty neat. Did you think it up yourself? Yeah. Although the idea isn't original. But the application by a bunch of civilians is. Charlie's modest. Well, gentlemen, if there are no other questions, we'll look forward to seeing you back here tonight. Right. Bye. Bye. -bye. Mm. Excuse me. Just a practice drill and just a dummy on that stretcher. But it could be real one day. Makes you stop and think a bit, doesn't it? trip to the park, another cell meeting on wheels. We'll get the word to Comrade Ted of what we've learned, and we'll get the word from Comrade Ted about how we're doing. Comrade Jack, you checked the filter centers from that map we gave you? All day. Number one at the aquarium is pretty well set up. 
I got to look into one room. Plenty of phones, radio equipment, plotting boards. How many phones is plenty? 10, 20, 50? The radio equipment. That's your specialty. What was it? Two RTs, portables, ham stuff, M&M's what? I couldn't tell. Someone spotted me looking around. I had to pretend I was a lost tourist and apologize and leave. You weren't followed, were you? Go back tomorrow. Get us details. All the other places. Number two, Westgate Street Library. Listen carefully, Philbrick. This is what the FBI wants. It's impossible to get it all. You can't make notes, but try to get something. Listen hard, etch it into your brain. Remember, Philbrick, remember some of it. Make yourself remember. How are you, Mr. Castor? Hi, Mr. Philbrick. Well, we've got good news. We've just heard from the FBI, and they've cleared you for security. Oh, great. Yeah. Didn't go too well. A lot of dope was transferred to Comrade Ted, all right, but it was done orally and fast. All I can remember is that Comrade Don and Comrade Jack went after details about, about the, the setup at the aquarium and the kind of equipment they've got at the Westgate Street Library, is that right? And I always thought it was only the post office that was never stopped by rain or snow or sleet or gloom of night, gullible me. Well, Mr. Philbrick, I'm afraid we have some more literature for you. This pretty much gives you the detail of the organization. Now, for next time, I'd like you to read up to here. Do you know this man? Sure. He was running the mobile radio outfit at the drill. His name's Charlie. Thanks. Well, we'll see you a week from tonight, Mr. Philbrick. We'll take it from there. Meanwhile, if you have any questions, get in touch with us. All right, thanks. Goodbye. Bye. The comrades go through an intricate maneuver in the privacy of my car to make sure that the detailed reports of our espionage work can't be overheard. Yet the FBI overhears. How? How else? If a guy named Charlie can equip the trunk of a car with a mobile radio unit, the FBI can do as well any day. Sure, they could equip my car to transmit television if they were in the mood. right now, but I don't dare. A mobile radio is possible, all right, but so is Comrade Ted possible, watching me from any one of a thousand corners. I don't even dare look when I get home. It's got to be at some isolated spot. Huh. And I thought the car was mine when I made the last payment. a good time to find out what's in that trunk. Maybe before I go to the office, I can... What's so unusual about an aerial, comrade? Most cars have them. The FBI picked up three comrades a little after dawn this morning. It's all in civilian defense. Oh? Make these chunks pretty big these days, don't they? Yeah, pretty big. Let's take a ride, comrade. Quiet spot in the country. It's a nice morning. Straight ahead, out Chestnut. Straight ahead, out Chestnut. Clever comrade Ted. If I do have a radio hookup to the FBI, it could be on now. And the FBI could get help to me. Straight out on Chestnut, where I'm not going. Radio what? 
I'm not sure. It was on the Fritz a few days ago. I told my wife to get it fixed. I don't know if she did or not. demonstration of yesterday. Open the hood. What you're looking for isn't under that hood, and you know it, Comrade Ted. You know about the trunk as well as I do. But you're going to have fun playing cat and mouse with me, aren't you? Close. Pull the seats up, front and back. What makes you think there's a mobile unit in my car? We met in your car. Do as I say. We talked in your car. Maybe what we said in your car is what the FBI had to hear before they could make a move. Another source. Maybe. I'm checking other sources, too. Back off. Inspection over now? It's over. Except for the trunk. Keys out of the car. The trunk's locked. Drop me off downtown, will you, comrade? I've got other places to check. And you thought late hours were the worst part of this job. Live and learn, Philbrick. And learn to be very careful if you want to live. Can you direct me to Perry Lane? Perry Lane? Uh, let me see. I know just about where it is. Here you are. When you get out of here, you turn left. You go three blocks, then turn left again. It doesn't cut through up to here. You're an hour late, Herb. What happened, Comrade 10? Yeah. He was checking all angles. He thought I might have a portable radio unit hidden in the car. He turned it inside out looking for it. Where was it? Pull out your choke. Choke? The motor isn't running. Go ahead. Pull it out. microphone is connected to a wire recorder installed over your gas tank. It works off your battery. We put it in within an hour after we got your report on the cell meeting saying you were going to use this car as a rendezvous. We checked it every time you left your car. It'll be out in an hour. Well, 
I'm to go left three blocks and left again a half a block. That's right. Thank you very much. Sir. Don't mention it. My pleasure. The Federal Bureau of Investigation intercepted sufficient information to neutralize communist efforts aimed at crippling civil defense organizations. Next week, we'll bring you another story from the files of Herbert A. Philbrick. The kind of story that could only be told by a man who for nine fantastic years served as a counter-spy for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. <laughs>